A really interesting moment took place on Fox News where the Fox host easily exposes a really dangerous narrative that a Republican Congressman Jefferson Van Drew is pushing and the premise for our uh, conversation about this upcoming election. And it has to do with accepting the results of the election, even if your person doesn't win. And it's so fascinating because rarely are questions like this asked on Fox News to Republicans. So great to see credit to this Fox host for doing so. But Van Drew, he initially goes, no, 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 I'm not saying it's only going to be fair if Trump wins, but also I don't even think about the possibility of Biden winning because Trump's going to win. And it's that sort of wiggly thing we see a lot of people do when they are essentially saying if Biden wins re-election, I'm going to cry foul. Congressman, in the last minute, you just said Donald Trump is going to win. If Donald Trump does not win, will you and the rest of the Republicans and the supporters of Donald Trump accept that he did not win and that the fix is not in? Because that's very crucial for us to have uh, fair and safe elections. If the elections are fair and safe, I always support the result of the election. If they are not, I have concerns. And the bottom line is, I don't think. So about if Trump wins, it's fair. If Biden wins, it's no. not fair. Is that what you're saying, Congressman? No, Arthel, that's not what I'm saying. Watch. He says no, and then watch what comes next. What I am saying is, I don't even think about him not winning because in my mind, and many Americans' minds, including middle of the road, uh, independents and Democrats, the future of our nation and of the Republic is at risk. This is not about saving the Republican Party. This is about saving the Republic. Now, he's absolutely correct that this is about saving the Republic. It's just his guy who's threatening the Republic. And uh, I have seen that same, and I'm sure you all have as well, that same format of response. It reminds me of when people get asked, will you say that Joe Biden won the 2020 election legitimately as he did? And the response is, Joe Biden's the president. Yeah, Joe Biden's the president. Joe Biden's the president. <laughs> they just keep repeating that. And it's because they're stating something that sounds like it's answering the question, but it's not. We understand he's the president, and we understand that you know that. We just don't think you're willing to admit that he won legitimately because of the election lies spread by MAGA. And so they are a similar thing where he goes, no, I'm not saying the only way it can be fair is for uh, Donald Trump to win. But listen, in a fair election system, I don't even picture Joe Biden winning. The only person who could win is Trump. So I'm not saying if Biden won legitimately, then I would accept that. He's just not going to win legitimately. <laughs> and it's super dishonest. And the premise of the foundation of our entire democratic process the requirement for it all to function is for both sides to mutually agree that they will respect our democracy enough to not dishonestly and unfactually cry foul when that isn't justified and when they lose and if that starts happening and even just one side constantly starts saying, as we already see, that any election they lose was not legitimate, then things can fall apart and derail very fast. Because even though, yes, we have these powerful institutions and all these complicated systems within those institutions, at the end of the day, it all sort of runs because we believe these things to be legitimate. It all is fueled off of the perceived legitimacy of the institutions. Once that goes away, everything falls apart. Now, uh, if evidence came forward that there were, you know, huge issues with these sorts of institutions, specifically our democratic systems, then absolutely you want to address that. And then it would be justified to cry foul. It's the evidence that has not been brought forward. And so language like this is so incredibly dangerous and it deteriorates the important uh, and crucial part of the functioning of our democracy, which again is a dedication to it by everyone involved. Here's another moment from this same interview. Okay, well, listen, I I'm sure the Democratic uh, side will say that a lot of their monies comes from the more grassroots, but 
let's keep going um, here, because once the federal uh, contribution limit is maxed out, the remainder of money raised will go for, from Trump uh, tonight will go to the RNC. You've got state political parties and to the Save America PAC, which, as you well know, helps pay Trump's astronomical legal bills. So Trump himself, he's a billionaire. But are you OK with campaign donations going towards his legal bills? Because you just mentioned that he does have those smaller donors who are using their hard earned money to try to support his political aspirations. Understood. So you got to realize, I believe the smaller donors, just like the big donors, realize that Donald Trump isn't being prosecuted. He's being persecuted, man. This is unheard of in American political or judicial or legal history. It really is. And so people understand. Now, is it unheard of because, but let me ask you, sir, is it unheard of because this is the first time you have a former president uh, stepping into the, the, the arenas, if you will, that he has stepped into? Maybe that's why it's unprecedented, because we've never had a, a former president uh, behave this way. No, it's unprecedented because there's so much at risk. It's unprecedented because, quite frankly, the left is really concerned that he has a real shot here. He's going to win. And they are afraid of that. So they are using every mechanism possible, whether it's ultra prosecutors, attorneys general, uh, and just to go. And this is a talking point we've heard a lot, which is uh, correctly started and then incorrectly finished, which is that the situation going on with trump is absolutely unprecedented and unheard of so that's the correct way to start the sentence and then the incorrect conclusion is and thus it's wrong or it's unjust what's happening to him he's the victim in this situation it's unheard of and it's just and it's what is supposed to happen in a country where no one's above the law which is that the unprecedented unheard of nature of this is started by the fact that trump allegedly committed a bunch of crimes. And that's the thing that spiraled all of these other uh, things out of it, meaning it put into motion the prosecutions because again, even though he's very prominent and has the status that he does, he's a former president, he has to be held accountable for violating the law. And they've provided no evidence, zero, that this is some coordinated effort to take Trump down. But prosecutors keep bringing forward more evidence and will do so in these trials that Trump violated the law. And then the other question that was being asked was about the money being raised by Trump's campaign and given to the RNC as well, Trump's PACs, and how if a lot of this money is going toward Trump's legal fees, aren't you concerned as a Republican about Republican voters who are donating their hard-earned money going toward someone defending themselves in a court of law. It's just very strange. Now, the reason why I don't worry too much about that is because the people donating this money are perfectly fine with their money being used for this. They just want to support Trump, however. But it's still a strange phenomenon that people are donating five bucks, 10 bucks to a billionaire so that he can uh, pay for his own legal expenses based on his own actions and the repercussions of those actions. Please make sure you are subscribed to this channel.